name is Abby Barnes. Today I'm literally just going to spend the whole day filming, or as long as my battery will allow, and film anything and everything that I see. Normally in this field we'd have deer for instance, but down there we have cows, so there's no deer this morning. But I came out about half five, and it's probably about half six now. The sun is rising behind me, it's pretty cold, the ground is coming in dew, it's absolutely beautiful. So we're just going to see what we can see, and enjoy the beautiful sunrise. At around half five, the sky is washed in a pale orange and pink, silhouetting the surrounding countryside. The air is still and icy, coating the grass in a thick dew that looks like millions of tiny crystals. Several geese fly over, heading south before the autumn hits, and the cows begin to rise as the morning draws on. Rabbits slowly grow their warm winter coats and eat their fill before the morning rush of dog walkers begins. Nearby, a fox spots me, panics, and flees to safety. Further on, in a field of wheat, another fox passes casually through, its tan fur camouflaging it perfectly. On the other side of the wheat field, Movement catches my eye. A female roe deer is feeding. She wanders around searching for shoots and grass, all the while her ears turning constantly, listening for the slightest sound. Then, on the edge of the field, another female emerges. She is wary, which suggests she may have a fawn. She rubs her scent from her legs and hooves onto the wheat. From this, other deer will know her gender, social status, physical condition, and whether the area is safe. She also uses the scent glands on her head. Then, another deer, but much smaller, emerges from the foliage. It slowly wanders over to the female. The pair are mother and fawn, and the other female probably shares their home range. The young may have been born in July and will stay with her mother for up to two years. Both are hesitant. The fawn is protected by lack of scent and they frequently lick their noses to keep them moist. This helps odour particles to stick to it, giving them an excellent sense of smell. The other female is still feeding nearby and ignores the other deers completely. Now it's around half past seven. Deer hardly chew their food in the morning. It goes into their first section of the four-chambered stomach. During rest, it then forms into small balls in their second stomach. The food is then brought back up to the mouth, chewed again, and swallowed into the third and fourth stomachs, where it is digested. This fawn, however, is still fed by its mother, and may be fed up to six times a day. Silently, the pair move away in search of new foods. The other female picks up their scent and follows in their steps. The sun continues to rise and the wheat turns golden I move into a small area of woodland, where the crows have been roosting. I hear rustling above me, and spot a grey squirrel feeding to fasten up for the winter. Leaving the wooded area, 
mist-covered fields lie before me. There are countless cobwebs waving in the wind. Their crafted patterns glisten and drip with dew. I spot a spider at work, neatly and patiently weaving a new web. Surrounding the fields, I find plenty of signs to show that autumn is on its way. Berries such as hawthorn, slow, and blackberry litter hedgerows, and the leaves have developed a slight golden orange edge. There are thistle flowers, clover, dandelion, and few other flowers that brave the dropping temperatures and darkening mornings in an attempt to boast their colours before winter closes in. A male kestrel lands on a fence post and keeps a keen eye open for some lunch whilst taking in the warm midday rays. At around one o'clock, I was fortunate enough to catch a glimpse of a feeding nut hatch. It taps the bark with a razor bill and skewers grubs underneath. The railway that runs nearby is periodically quiet. Here, rabbits enjoy their family groups and feeding on the grass. Sadly, the day is beginning to draw to an end and the temperatures begin to drop. I was pleased to spot a male roe deer nearby the woods but noticed how he limped. He still had his skilful silence though and was as alert as ever. As I began to walk back along the route I took this morning, a buzzard set some on a pole to survey the land, but then moves off elsewhere. Today has been a beautifully warm day and has perfectly concluded with a golden wash sunset and the stunning song of a robin.